Welcome to the Goodyear City Council meeting. We're excited to have you be a part of this important public process. Tonight, you will have the opportunity to address City Council on both non-agenda and agenda items. The agendas and the speaker request cards are located on the tables outside of Council Chambers. You must fill out a speaker card in order to address the City Council. Please hand in your completed card to the City Clerk before the start of the meeting. If the meeting has already begun, please hand it to any City staff. You may also check the I do not wish to speak option on the card. This allows you to still voice your opinion on an item on the record without having to speak. Public comment on a non-agenda item will take place during the citizen comment portion of the evening. These are items that don't appear on tonight's formal agenda. The city clerk will call your name when it's time for you to speak. At that time, please approach the podium and state your name for the record. We ask that you speak clearly into the microphone. You'll have a maximum of three minutes and there is a timer visible from the podium. When the light changes from green to yellow, your time is coming to an end. When the light turns red, your time is up. Note that you may also choose not to speak if other speakers before you have said what you wanted to say. Shouting, cheering, and loud noises will not be tolerated, and violators may be removed for disrupting the meeting. Goodyear City Council meetings stream live on Facebook and YouTube, and online at GoodyearAZ.gov. Thank you for your participation in tonight's meeting. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting on April 8, 2019. Please join Vice Mayor Campbell in the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, as we gather here tonight, we ask that you bless all of those that are present. We ask that you bless this council as we deliberate and make decisions that will affect our residents. We pray, Lord, that you will surround our first responders, fire, police, with your care and your blessings to keep them safe. We ask especially a blessing for our military serving here and around the world. Bless them and their families and keep them safe. We ask these things in thy most holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for that prayer. We have two communication items tonight, so we're going to start with 4.1. The first item is a proclamation recognizing May as Water Safety Month and an update on the upcoming events held at the YMCA pool. And I will, before we do this though, just so I, they know I'm going to say it, they won't say, Mary, you need to be down there. Um, you're going to give the presentation. Correct. All right, and so we have David Aside, of YMCA uh, and YMCA Executive Director, Paul McKinn. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. As you are aware, the City of Goodyear partners with the Agua Fria Unified School District and the Southwest Valley of the Sun YMCA to maintain and operate the joint use pool located at the Y. This partnership agreement allows each organization to stretch their resources and ultimately provides increased aquatic opportunities for everyone in the community. It's my pleasure to introduce District Executive Director Paul McKim, who will share activities planned at the YMCA pool in observance of Water Safety Month this coming May. Thank you, Mayor Lord, Council. This is an awesome opportunity for us to come here tonight and uh, talk about some of the things the Y does. So I brought with me uh, Lance Thornton, our Associate Executive Director uh, from the Southwest Valley Y here, who really will be uh, hands-on with making sure that our safety around water lessons happen. So tonight we're talking about um, building strong swimmers and confident kids. So in the history of the YMCA, we invented group swim lessons over 100 years ago. Uh, We've had over 125 years of commitment and service to the Phoenix area. Um, our challenge is right there. It's pools um, and unguarded pools and ungated pools and 
children around pools who haven't learned to swim. So how big is this problem? Well, you can see three children die each day as a result of drowning. So 88% of children who drowned were under some form of supervision. These, these are scary statistics. Uh, in Arizona, in the Phoenix area here, you can see um, it's the drowning is the leading cause of accidental death in children under the age of five. And over the past three years, we've had enough deaths to fill up three classrooms. Um, our cause here is saving lives, raising awareness around the preventable tragedy, engaging the families on how to be safe around water. And we're going to talk about the pledge here in a minute and, and making sure that we're all water watchers, which we're wearing our name tags here with the water watcher pledge on it. And we're going to teach children and adults how to swim because way too many adults uh, also die from drowning. So uh, we're going to announce on May 1st the uh, commitment that the Valley of the Sun YMCA is making this year to 2,000 free swim lessons uh, throughout the Valley. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, those dates will be May 13th through May 23rd. Um, so at the Southwest Valley YMCA, we'll be doing 150 free swim lessons. Registration will uh, open May 1st at 12 p.m. And uh, if you don't get in the free swim lessons, we do do financial assistance on the swim lessons we do year round and all the other programming as well. So we don't wanna turn anyone away from the opportunity to learn to save a life. Uh, so again, May 13th, non-swimmers uh, ages six months to adults, all of our YMCAs, it's water safety awareness um, and education and swimming skills. And we're working with partnership tools and resources to provide information for parents on deck and it's free to everyone in the community. So this is just the basic kind of skills that we try and teach during this time. Uh, swim, float, swim, and jump, push, turn, grab. The scary part is that uh, most drownings happen within 10 feet of, of safety. So we're trying to really help people understand how to get to the edge and how to get out. So I mentioned our uh, name tags here, our placards. These are the water watchers and we encourage these to be all around the valley. Lots of backyard pools, lots of grandparents with pools and et cetera, et cetera, pool parties. And on the back of it is a pledge. It says, I pledge to be a water watcher to keep kids safe in and around water. I agree to uh, actively watch all children, keep my eyes on the water, avoid distractions, and emergency pull all children out of the water, call 911 and begin CPR. So I actually brought additional tags. If you guys would be interested, I'd love to get these in your hands tonight. And you can all be water watchers and make this commitment. So uh, join us. Uh, this um, announcement will take place on May 1st at the Christown YMCA. Lots of news coverage. It's a press conference. Um, and, and we appreciate you guys' uh, commitment to making this Safety Around Water Month. Well, thank you. I have to come down to read your proclamation. So why don't you just come up here and drop off one to all of them, and I'll be walking down. Thank you very much. I have a question real quick. When you go to register the 1st of May in Goodyear, do we just go to our local YMCA on Litchfield Road? Correct. Very good. Thank you. All right, we have them on. So we're water watchers. I don't even. Well, first of all, thank you. I was a swimming instructor for years, uh, also water safety. Um, and uh, it, you're so right. It's so easy to be safe. Uh, but the, e the difficult part is they have to bring the students to the pool. Um, and I had our youngest daughter swimming at six months. So um, it, that course is a great course with certain, certain individuals. Certainly some babies don't like it that well. So anyway, so I look forward to get, reading this for you. So the Safety Around Water Month, May 2019. Whereas the Valley of the Sun, YMCA, designates the month of May 2019 <coughs> as the Safety Around Water Month by providing 2,000 residents with an entire session of free swim lessons to focus on drowning and prevention. And whereas drowning is the top cause of injury related deaths for our Arizona children, you gave us those numbers, staggering. Whereas about 10% of the children who survive a drowning, well, they will suffer a lifelong disability. Whereas rising awareness will increase the understanding and the education of effective ways to prevent drowning. Now, therefore, it be resolved that I, Georgia Lore, Mayor of the City of Goodyear, Arizona, do proclaim May 2019 
as Safety Around the Water Month. And I urge citizens of Goodyear to support the awareness and promote safety for individuals of all ages participating in water-related activities in our community given under my hand in these free United States in the city of Goodyear on the eighth day of April, 2019, to which I have caused the seal of the city of Goodyear to be affixed and have made this proclamation public. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations, this is your proclamation. Thank you so much. The next item is a proclamation recognizing April as a Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And uh, by Mariah, right? Mariah Moon will accept the proclamation on behalf of the New Life Center. Welcome. It's nice to see you again. Thank you for all that you do. Whereas today, the, way, the Sexual Assault Awareness Month, April 2019. Whereas April, can re, re, April is re recognized nationally as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And the city of Goodyear wants to demonstrate its support in ending sexual assault and support the numerous victims who are among us. And whereas Sexual Assault Awareness Month provides an opportunity to educate the public on serious sexual assault and prevalence of this epidemic in our lives. Whereas sexual assault it's defined as a sexual contact or behavior that occurs without the explicit consent of the victim. And whereas everyone has the right to live free from sexual assault, statistics reveal that one in three women and one in six men will experience unwanted sexual contact in their lifetime. One in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually assaulted by the age of 18. Whereas every 98 seconds an American is sexually assaulted, eight out of 10 assaults are committed by someone who is known by the victim. Whereas preventing sexual assault is a community responsibility, absolutely. Finding solutions depends on involvement among people throughout the community, including the city officials, citizens, schools, and churches whereas citizens should become aware of how they can prevent sexual assault by building communities where individuals flourish in a safe and nourishing environment. Now, therefore, it be resolved that I, Georgia Lord, Mayor of the City of Goodyear, Arizona, do proclaim April 2019 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and I urge the citizens of Goodyear to work together to eliminate sexual assaults in our community given under my hand in these free United States in the city of Goodyear on the first day of April, 2019, to which I have caused the seal of the Goodyear to be fixed and have made this proclamation public. So glad you're here tonight, and why don't you say a few words? Thank you, everyone. So as of December of 2018, New Life Center became a dual status service provider, surviving, uh, serving victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. Our goal for the next year is to do strategic community assessments so that we can appropriately fill the gap in the West Valley and Maricopa beyond uh, when responding to victims of sexual assault and their families. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here this evening.
Now is the time for citizens who would like to address the City Council on any non-agenda item within the jurisdiction of the Goodyear City Council. Do we have any? No, Mayor. Does anyone in the audience wish to speak? Oh, we do have someone. Please come forward and state your name. And just let me explain to you why you're coming forth. We may take any one of the following. One, respond to criticism. Two, request the staff invest, investigate and report on the matter. Request the matter be scheduled on the future agenda. You have three minutes to speak. The yellow light will let you know you have 20 minutes left. Before you speak, just identify yourself, please, for the record. My name is Eric Prelog. Welcome. Thank you. Go ahead. None of you got the call. None of you got the call that Amy Eckert's mom got the day she was hit by a distracted driver and lost her unborn baby. Mayor Lord, council members, I don't know if it's within your power to regulate distracted driving in Goodyear. I'm not a lawyer. I don't, I don't know the whole law, but I do see the chiefs of police and fire here, and I see council members, all of whom are interested in safeguarding our safety. I live down in Estrella. I ride a motorcycle to work every day. I can't tell you how many times I see people looking up, looking down. Sometimes they look down for a long time and it really scares me. You see them weaving right to left in their lane, sometimes out of their lane. Council members, Mayor Lord, please do whatever you can. If it's petitioning the state for more stringent penalties or for tighter laws around distracted driving. If it's making laws right here in Goodyear, I don't know if you can make those kinds of laws here. If you can, please, please look at it in some upcoming uh, meetings that you have. Thank you. We appreciate you coming forth. And that is a very, very uh, delicate subject. And thank you for bringing it forth. Thank you. The next is the... Per and we will get back to him, right? We have his name about what future. We don't have any contact information. Oh, All set? I'm sorry, I didn't want to miss that. Next is the approval of the consent agenda. Will the city clerks please read consent agendas item 6.1 through 6.4 by title only? 6.1, approval of minutes. 6.2, recommend approval of a new series 12 liquor license with growler privileges from a Cayo restaurant. 6.3, adopt resolution number 2019-1951, promoting fair housing and recognizing April as fair housing month. 6.4, adopt resolution number 2019-1954, adopting written continuing disclosure compliance procedures and issuance and post-issuance tax compliance procedures relating to tax exempt bonds and providing for an effective date. Thank you, are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Does anybody in one audience like to speak? Then can I have a motion, a second, to approve the consent agenda? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilmember Stiff and a second by Councilmember Bazillo. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Loritano? Aye. Councilmember Stiff? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Kano? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Motion carries. All right, we're down to business. I'm reminding Council to wait till a motion and a second uh, before discussion. So we're at seven point. One, and as a request to adopt resolution 2019-1952, authorizing the sale of general obligation refunding bonds series 2019. Finance Manager, Gerald Eccleson to present. Jared? Good evening, Mayor Lord, members of the council. The item we have in front of us right now is to authorize the refunding of the 2009 series general obligation bonds. This will allow us to take advantage for, with some more advantageous interest rates that we have out there right now. We're looking at an estimated present value savings of about a million dollars, which is an 18% reduction of the debt service for the 2009 series general obligation bond. <clears throat> the maximum maturity of the new bonds will be equal to the current 2009 bonds, which will be July of 2029. These bonds, while they're general obligation bonds, they're backed by secondary property tax. These bonds are actually paid for with water and wastewater revenues. Are there any questions on this item? Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. 
Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right. Would the city clerk please read resolution 2019-1952 by title only, please? Adopt resolution number 2019-1952, authorizing the issuance and sale of City of Goodyear, Arizona General Obligation Refunding Bonds Series 2019, delegating the authority to approve certain matters with respect to the bonds and the bonds being refunded, providing for the annual levy of a tax for the payment of the bonds, appointing a registrar and paying agent and a depository trustee for the bonds, approving the form of certain documents and authorizing completion, execution and delivery thereof, delegating the authority to approve and deem finally form of official statement, ratifying all actions taken and to be taken with respect to the bonds and furtherance of this resolution and authorizing any necessary budget transfers related to the bonds. Thank you. Is there a motion a second to adopt resolution 2019-1952? Do I hear the motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Kano, a second by uh, Councilman Fazillo. Open for council discussion. Councilman Fazillo. Just a gentle one. I believe I heard it, but you're not extending the length of the term of the original bond, correct? Mayor, Mayor Lord, Councilmember Fazillo, that's correct. It's going to remain at July of 2029. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, then let's have a roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Stiff? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Councilmember Kano? Aye. Aye. Councilmember Fazillo? Aye. Councilmember Loritano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you very much, Chair. 7.2 is a request to adopt the resolution 2019 1953, authorizing the sale of the general obligation refunding bond series 2019. Jared is again to present. Thank you, Mayor Lord, members <laughs> of the council. <clears throat> this item here is authorizing the issue of new 2019 series bonds in the amount of $27 million. <clears throat> These bonds will pay for the construction of the Recreation and Aquatic Center, the replacement of Fire Station 181, and the police radio system simulcast site portion of that project as well. <clears throat> There's a 20 year term on these bonds. They will have a maximum maturity date of July of 2039. <clears throat> and the, the timing of the debt service payments were planned to keep the total property tax rate below the $1.74, which was the adopted council uh, policy for the maximum rate allowable. With that, are there any questions? Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. All right. Will the city clerk please read resolution 2019-1953 by title only? Adopt resolution number 2019-1953 authorizing the issuance and sale of City of Goodyear, Arizona General Obligation Bonds Series 2019, delegating the authority to approve certain matters with respect to the bonds, providing for the annual levy of a tax for the payment of the bonds, appointing a registrar and paying agent for the bonds, approving the form of certain documents and authorizing completion, execution, and delivery thereof, Delegating the authority to approve and deem final a form of official statement ratifying all actions taken and to be taken with respect to the bonds and furtherance of this resolution and authorizing any necessary budget transfers related to the bonds and the <coughs> projects financed there, thereby. Thank you. Is there a motion a second to adopt resolution 2019-1953? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Vice Mayor Campbell, a second by Councilman Laura Tano. Open for council discussion. Councilman Hampton. I believe I need to excuse myself from the previous vote and this certain. I, this, will you speak into the microphone? Yeah, I think I need to excuse myself from the previous vote and this vote because of my day job as well. So. All right. And have you run that through the uh, the lawyer? Yeah. Okay. You're, you have a direct pecuniary interest in the action item. Uh, we can take it offline and for a minute if you want to discuss it. Yeah, we can do that real quick. Maybe we can take a five-minute recess. Did you say yes or no? Yeah. He does. He wants a recess. A five-minute recess, oh, Mayor. Back okay. and forth. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh, I didn't hear that. All right, we're going to take a five-minute recess. <laughs> so we're, oh. Oops. Can I have it quiet in the audience? Any other discussion? No. Councilmember Fazell. Just curious, the amortization schedule for these bonds, are they going to be pretty much straight all the way through? You're going to front load or back load of them? Only reason why I ask is I always think of a 30 year fix. I like things kind of level. And how are you going to how are you going to set these up? So Mayor Lord, 
Council Member Pizzillo, we actually are trying to level set all of our debt across the entire general obligation load. So we're more looking at that dollar seventy four to make sure that we stay below the dollar seventy four. We also are looking at potential bonds that we might have in the future, trying to plan for those as well. So it's not a completely level set bond in this case. Uh, the, the the refunding bond that we just spoke of the payments, the principal payments look very similar to what the old 2009 bonds look like. This series will, will kind of fit into some spots where we had some availability of uh, some capacity. No, I understand the dollar seventy four. I guess my concern is that you know down the road, if you if you if you backload it too much, it's going to be more difficult for you to sell the bonds because you're going to be harder pressed against the dollar seventy four. That's all I'm asking is try to best to try to streamline that. You know, I'm a firm believer that try to keep everything kind of equal so you know what that debt surface is kind of going forward. Uh, in the past, we've had a tendency to try to backload a lot of things to make it cheap up front. And for my own personal, to me, that's not the way to kind of go with debt service. So I would appreciate anything to try to keep that as level as possible when, you, when you're working on those. Thank you. Any, any other discussion? Ma Madam, Madam Mayor. Oops. I uh, just want to follow up with uh, Councilmember Hampton. Uh, we did go off uh, record for a couple of minutes and reviewed his recusal. Uh, his recusal is based upon his, in, his employment in the financial services industry, but we reviewed this bond issuance, and his company is not involved at this time. So there is, he uh, brought it up as an abundance of caution uh, in, in the future, but given the current status of his company and his employment and not being involved in this issuance, uh, he doesn't need to recuse himself this evening. We appreciate that clarification. All right, so in that case, no other questions? Let's roll call. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Council Member Pozzello? Aye. Council Member Loritano? Aye. Council Member Stiff? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Great, we're at 7.3, a request to approve the letter of intent for the Goodyear Civic Square of Australia Falls project and approve the budget transfer in the amount of 250 thousand dollars and I have our, we have our city manager Julie Arundal making our presentation tonight thank you good evening mayor and council I'm back this evening to continue our conversation that we started on March 25th about the Goodyear Civic Square at Australia Falls project um, but first I'd like to acknowledge a couple of guests we have us with us this evening uh, Mike Olson if you mind just standing for a second <laughs> he's the um, the Chief Financial Officer, Treasurer, and Corporate Secretary for GLOBE. Um, and I also want to acknowledge Ed Bull, who's been working with us on this project as well. He's in the audience, so thank you. So to continue our discussion from March 25th, uh, we had talked about three project themes for this um, upcoming City Hall project. The first was to create dedicated space designed for consolidated public services. The second was to create a gathering space a gathering place for public events to truly identify the, and embrace the heart of our community to activate for public and civic uses. And then the third was to create economic vitality through mixed use development. And this would be your restaurants, retail, office, and high density residential. This would be accomplished through a public-private partnership with the Globe Corporation. And as we discussed, the Globe Corporation is a family-owned organization. They have owned 47 acres on McDowell, and I'll show a map again, on McDowell and Monte Vista uh, since the 1970s, as Mr. Getz shared with us at the last meeting. The first phase of this project would embrace a city hall with a library, a two acre park, again, for civic activities and events, and it would add a class A speculative office building, which brings a high end office project to Goodyear that simply does not exist right now. So just to share again, some of the maps that we reviewed, Oops, I don't know what I did. There we go, there, I there undid it. Is. Um, I thought that was a pointer. It might not be a pointer on this one. So if you look to the south of the map, you can see McDowell Road. On the far north of the map is Monte Vista. Down the left-hand side of the project is the Bullard Wash. And to the east is 150th Avenue and also the Harkins is identified over there. So this, um, this site would be, I mean, the, I'm sorry, our project that we're discussing tonight and which would be encompassed by the letter of intent would be within the red dotted area you see to the center of the project. 
However, the remainder of the site could support mixed uses, such as but not limited to the restaurant, retail, office, general commercial, and high, desi high density residential. Uh, we truly believe uh, with our GLOBE partner that the public investment and the private investment within that red dotted area will begin to activate this entire site. So to focus now on the red dotted area, uh, this is the project we've been calling Goodyear Civic Square at Estrella Falls. The first phase, again, would include a five-story stately city hall building to the far left, uh, thinking about 125,000 square feet. You can see directly in front of the city hall building, it would be a two-acre park to create the square. And the square could, again, be activated for arts festivals and parades and uh, food trucks and all sorts of different uh, public events. And to the north would be the first phase of the Spec A office, envisioned to be a three-story, 100,000 square foot uh, Class A building. And so again, to kind of paint the picture, we talked about the City Hall having a library, and the library has 140,000 visitors annually. The City Hall project itself would have, let's say, 500 employees and another 500 employees that would occupy eventually that Class A office building. So you can see how we've now created the place and that daytime density where all those other mixed uses that our residents want to see could exist. I've included this drawing again, or this picture again, because it really brings to life the vision that we're trying to create for this project. Uh, this was a conceptual um, inspiration for us. This is an actual place, South Lake Town Square in the city of South Lake, Texas. And you can see it's very similar in its setup where it has a stately city hall building towards the end of the two acre park surrounded by mixed use. Uh, one of the things I did is I had uh, Googled this community and they only have about 31,000 residents. So I do think they all came out for this event. So uh, glad to see that square was full. So here tonight, we are to um, looking to see uh, about council's approval of the letter of intent, which would be the first official step in this public-private partnership with the Globe Corporation. It would signal the intention of both parties to pursue the project and inform the community and neighborhood other projects that we are serious and looking forward to uh, the fruition of this project. But it also notifies the market that Class A office would be coming to Goodyear. And then finally, with the budget transfer, it would also allow the city to begin working on the programming phase of this project. So just to highlight a couple of items from the letter of intent, um, Globe Corporation would donate six to seven acres of land to the city. This would be to construct the city hall, the two acre park and the associated parking. The Goodyear Civic Square project would be funded by the city of Goodyear and we had talked about um, our available, available funding sources, including some previously voter approved uh, bonds. The Globe Corporation would construct a 100,000 square foot Class A office building concurrently with the project, um, with the city's project. The city would ultimately maintain the Civic Square improvements and the roads would be dedicated to the city as public streets. So upon both parties' signature on the letter of intent, the city would begin our programming phase and we would then be working to negotiate the development agreement, all of the details that would go into the partnership with the Globe Corporation. We would also simultaneously be working to pursue the planned area development for the totality of the parcel, the entire 47 acres and, and perhaps even a little more. Um, it is our intent, if the project continues to move along uh, the way that it has, that we could have the development agreement and the planned area development back for council consideration before your summer break. And with that, I'd be pleased to answer any questions. All right, are there any speaker cards? Yes, Mayor. Pardon me? Yes. Would you announce them, please? Joanne Osborne. So Representative Joanne Osborne is coming before. You have the microphone. Thank you. Uh, for the record, Joanne Osborne, owner Osborne Jewelers 15350 West McDowell Road here in Goodyear. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. I kind of um, was sitting there thinking, well, is this a little premature to come speak to you so soon? But I really don't think so. And especially if it's going to be uh, possibly in front of you before you leave for summer break, I know this isn't too early. But uh, first of all, I come to you as a business owner. 
And, um, and when the map was up, I could see my little triangle of Osborne Jewelers sitting right next to this area. There was a time that my store was across the street from City Hall. <laughs> so maybe you'll be coming back to the neighborhood and being across the street from me again. But uh, I have to say, in the, the many, many years that uh, we have located in Goodyear since 1996, when we built our store, there were many places that we could choose from. But I knew, and my husband knew, that Goodyear was a place of quality, was business friendly, was a place of community, and a place that, regardless of what happens in the retail market, we were in a very viable area, and, uh, and we chose to be where we are. Going forward, retailers, as you know, have struggled. In the last, uh, since 2015, over 30,000 retailers have closed their stores. This year already is um, expected to have another 5,000. It's very difficult to be a um, brick and mortar business. You need to have energy, synergy, um, lifeblood coming to your areas to make those stores um, viable, restaurants, and um, community wanting to come. And so I think that what's being presented in front of you gives that viability. Now, as one of your former teammates on the city council, we know how long we've looked for this. Um, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, but you're there. You're finally at, at, at another point in our time that maybe there's a possibility. And I certainly thank Globe Corporation for being thoughtful and creative, and you guys are going to be looking at ways to um, make this happen, hopefully this time in Goodyear. And sometimes it is that, that public-private partnership that makes things finally um, come to fruition. So I'm excited about that. I know that you will make good financial decisions. Um, but lastly, I come as a citizen. A citizen, like I said, since 96, that has waited a very long time for a city hall that she wants to be proud of. That she, not that we're not proud now, because wherever Goodyear sits, that's where our lifeblood is. But we want a place that is a gathering place for our citizens, and everybody is un, under one roof together. And um, remember quality, because that's all, something we've always stood for. Remember to, this isn't the Taj Mahal, we know that but it's someplace that citizens should be very proud that they are at. So I thank you for that tonight. Thank you. Are there any other cards? No, Mayor. All right. <coughs> Is there a motion in the second to approve the letter of intent? Do I hear the motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. I heard a motion from Council Member Stiff, and I'm sorry, which one would, and Council Member Loretano for the second. All right, open for Council discussion. Council Member you know, I'm going to sort of echo the representative Osborne on this. We've been waiting for this for a long time, and and I had this vision in my head of a of a gathering place, and how can we get this thing kicked off? And I really appreciate uh, Globe stepping forward because I I do believe that we can get the synergy out of this place to get what we need to get done. The number of people that are going to be in that area, because we always hear if you try to get into a restaurant on the weekends around here. You can forget it. I mean, it is busy, but the problem is, is getting that day traffic so we can get more quality and more variety so they can get the business during the day for lunch. And I think once this goes here and my vision, I see that gathering place, I can see art festivals, I can see music festivals, you know, what we're having there on the lake. I can see some of that being held there right there at City Hall. Um, and that picture that you put up there, uh, I'm, I've been looking for something for this for, as uh, Representative Osborne had mentioned, for a very, very, very long time. And I really want to see this come through. And I appreciate Globe stepping up and uh, getting this done. Thank you. Councilmember Loretano. And, and I'm going to echo that. That was one of the first committees I sat on, which was a city center committee with the mayor. And and I am so excited, I, although it's not the same as where it was, I think this is actually a better spot for the time. It's. I want to thank Globe for coming forward, and I want to thank the city manager and your whole staff because I know this took a lot of work on everybody's part because this is just wonderful. This is going to be the gathering place. It's going to have synergy. It's going to bring together the corner where um, Representative Osborne stores and the other stores and the restaurants. So when you have those festivals, 
and I know we've already talked about making sure that those part those parcels it kind of the whole area blooms that's the goal so I am very excited and I am very excited to have globe as our um, public private partnership and I think it will be a wonderful area and I am actually very excited about that class A office space believe it or not uh, I think that will add the business element that also will help bring some of that daytime traffic so great job everybody any other comments all right, well, I, I will make a comment. This is why I'm on the council. 2004, I was chosen to be the city center chairman. So I spent from 2004 until this very moment wanting a city center. Uh, and the citizens also did that. And we had a, a great success with our, our, uh, our campaign to build this. And so due to the downturn in the economy, we had to postpone it. So. I'm terribly pleased, and I can't thank Globe enough. It's just a great partnership. Um, and when you first started talking about this, I just held my breath in hopes that when the staff met with you, that we would be able to work through this. And speaking of the staff, I want to thank, Julie, I want to thank you and the entire staff. Um, so I want to clap on the staff here a minute for you. Come on. Uh, this is not easy uh, arrangement, but it's nice because we're prepared this time. Uh, we have the bonding, uh, we have the citizen backing, and we have the partnership. Couldn't ask for anything more, so thank you. So with that, let's vote on this. All in favor say aye. 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 There better not be opposed. <laughs> Ayes have it. All right, thank you very much. So let's go to number two. Uh, and there, is there a motion a second to approve the budget transfer in the amount of $250,000 from the general fund portion of the capital uh, project reserve? Do I hear the motion? So moved. Second. I've heard a motion from Vice Mayor Campbell and a second from Councilman Bazil. Open for council discussion. No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Let's go to 7.4, a request to adopt the resolution 2019-1955 to authorize a job creation agreement for Fairlife LLC, Economic Development Project Manager, Harry Paxson to present. Harry? Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. It's my privilege to be here tonight to present to you a job creation agreement for Fairlife Incorporated or Fairlife LLC. Okay, let's see, we have the presentation, there we go. Fairlife is an international manufacturer and bottler of milk beverages headquartered in Chicago, Illinois. And they produce nutrient-rich, ultra-filtered milk that's 50% more protein and 50% less sugar than regular milk. Their first custom-designed facility from the ground up, which will be a, certainly a, a lot of innovation and technology in this facility, as they make a significant investment in, in our community, will be here in Goodyear. I'll give you a little bit of the backstory about Fairlife selecting Goodyear. It's been several years that we've been working with them. They shortlisted sites in Goodyear, and then we also competed with other locations in the West. Staff worked with the Arizona Commerce Authority, the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, and several private utility companies over the last several years in working with them and helping them to inch forward each year and overcome some challenges that they also face. In fact, one of the challenges was with a gas line that has to be brought, I think, by about 12 miles to the facility to provide the high-pressure natural gas, which also existed in the area, but not at the level that they needed. That also helps bolster the infrastructure that will exist in, in this business park. Fairlife purchased the property just recently, last month, in March, and Fairlife anticipates and has planned for future expansions at the, at the facility. So this will be what we believe will be the first phase of a, a larger project over time. The location of the facility is a northwest corner of Cotton Lane and Thomas Road at the PV303 Business Park and the site consists of approximately 54 acres. This is uh, two pictures, one of the site plan you can see there at the northwest corner. Thomas Road west of Cotton Lane does not exist today, and so over the frontage of their property, they'll be building that, that portion of Thomas Road. 
And then also you can see to, to the right there, uh, an image of the facility as it sets back from Cotton, <clears throat> Cotton Lane and Thomas Road. Um, so that gives you a good idea of the location. The agreement provisions for Fair Life, will the project will create about 140 full-time positions, paying full-time positions an annual wage of at least 40,000, and then also providing for health care insurance of at least 65% of that being paid by the company for the employee. <coughs> this company will invest a significant amount in one of the highest um, capital investment projects in the PB303 area, $200 million in capital equipment and tenant improvements in phase one. So this agreement that's being proposed to you tonight proposes to waive 100% of all non-expedited plan <coughs> review and permit fees up to a maximum of $900,000. And if expedited reviews are available, then those would also be covered. One of the things that we always do on these um, projects is provide you with an economic analysis, an independent third-party economic analysis, and we did that with Applied Economics. They estimate that 817 million in total economic impact over the life of this agreement over the next five years. So there will be increased property taxes and sales tax revenues generated by Fairlife as well as its employees, <coughs> vendors, and service providers. The direct revenue over the next five years is estimated to be $3.4 million. I also want to let you know that we're fortunate to have John Holzimer here tonight from, from Fairlife as the Vice President of Engineering. He's here in, in the audience if you have any questions or if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to address those. I also want to recognize Mitchell Allen, who several years ago first met with Fair Life in Chicago many years ago. And so we appreciate his, <coughs> his support on this project as well with the Greater Phoenix Economic Council. I'd be happy to answer any questions, Mayor. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? Yes, Mayor. Representative Os Osborne. Uh-oh. <coughs> Please come forward. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, wearing that fourth hat now, as a representative, um, I wanted to let you know that this is something that the state was also uh, trying to get a head start on. And um, in my land and agriculture uh, committee, we um, had passed a bill through the committee to um, look for another uh, dairy inspector because the state is, I guess, at its limit of dairy inspectors and this wonderful industry and project will call for another one. And so I just thought you'd like to know that the state was also looking after this. <laughs> Thank you for that bit of information. Are there any other? No, Mayor. All right. Excuse me. I apologize for all this coughing. You just have to bear with it. I'm trying to find which council person gave me this, but I, I won't make any accusation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, Will the city clerk please read resolution 2019? Is that where we're at? I'm asking for a motion. Yeah. Right. Yes. Thank uh, you very much. Um, is there a motion a second uh, to adopt resolution number 29? Actually, Mayor, I need to read it first. Oh, right, sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. Well, the city clerk, I'll get back to it right now. I'll forget this cough drop and the coughing. Will the city clerk please read resolution 2019-1955 by title only, please. Adopt resolution number 2019-1955, approving, authorizing, and directing the city manager to execute a job creation agreement for Fair Life LLC, authorizing city staff to take actions consistent with terms of resolution and agreement, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion, a second to adopt resolution number 2019-1955? Do I hear a motion? So, so moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Hampton, and I didn't hear who the second was, and Vice Mayor uh, Campbell but did the second. Open for Council discussion. Councilman Hampton. Sure. I'd say uh, welcome to Goodyear. I know I'm not the first, but thank you so much for choosing Goodyear and wanting to invest in Goodyear. I think it's exciting that it's your first uh, ground-up facility. I think that'll be pretty, pretty exciting for you and also for, I think, people in the community who want to work at a high-tech manufacturing type facility. So thank you once again for that. I think it's a great addition to Goodyear and the things that we're trying to, to be and grow here in Goodyear. So, so yeah, I'm excited for, for all your new employees and for you and for all your future success. So thank you so much. 
Council Member Stiff. When we talked about this uh, last week, I wanted to point out, because we talked about the uh, Civic Center, make sure I use the right Civic, Civic Square, <laughs> right lingo. Um, I said that'd be a great place for Fairlife to relocate their headquarters to. So we have a great place for you too if you want to do that. But uh, seriously, we're excited to have you here. We really appreciate you choosing us. We look forward to a long partnership. Thanks. Any other comments? It's so nice to have a manufacturer with something healthy. And I think that will uh, be very good for our city because we are pretty close to a healthy city. So thank you. All right, then let's do a roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell. Aye. Councilmember Keenum? Aye. Councilmember Pizzello? Aye. Councilmember Loritano? Aye. Councilmember Steph? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right. That's great. All right. Now is the time for council comments, commendations, reports on current events. Who'd like to go first? That's fine. Councilmember Pizzello? You know, first place, uh, you, the staff did an excellent job on our um, Leonard, uh, our, our volunteer appreciation dinner what was it, about a couple hundred people there to 250 it's quite a lot there and i know they really appreciated uh i had the opportunity because i love to work those tables when i go around and personally thank them because you know how i am about the volunteers i always love the note i I'm, i'll map you know match our people up who who step up at any one time and and volunteer for the various services throughout the city i, I mentioned the, uh, there's nobody who has a better uh in my view uh, community than we do when it comes to that the second thing is, Mayor, I got to uh, say a few words on your behalf uh, for Urban Air. And I want to tell you this, that place is a fantastic place. Uh, had the opportunity when my uh, grandkids were up there with my son. And in fact, uh, we had Brandon there uh, working the, uh, with the kids inside the cage there on the, what is it, the Ninja Course. Um, they have a little bit of everything in there. And um, uh, when the kids first got there, and in fact, I think Rebecca was having some trouble trying to keep track of hers as well. So where's the kids? I don't know. They, they just kids disappear. There's so many places to go in there, not just the trampoline. It's an all indoor amusement. And I think it's going to be a great addition here to the city. Uh, just a little sidebar mayor. He did know about my easy to grin, the uh, owner. I will talk to him about that. So he was very familiar with that. But anyway, again, a great week. Uh, and Glendale's moving in the right direction. A good year, I'll get it right. And uh, because I said Glendale, slip of the tongue, I used to work for them when I first came out here, so that was on my brain. So, anyway, it's been one of those nights. Mayor will hit me up for that later, but anyway, it's a great, great you got to check it out with your kids or even kids that are my age. Go check it out, it is a great place. Thank you. Yes. I just want to tag on the Urban Air uh, Adventure Park was uh, what also made it very special was to see our police and fire and uh, military families enjoying that soft opening. And I thought it was very special that they uh, had that opportunity to jump right in there. It was a lot of fun. Another thing we did this week was go to the Harley Davidson. I know I took it from Brandon. <laughs> uh, groundbreaking for the Roadrunner, and that's going to be a very exciting asset for Goodyear as well. Any other comments? Yes, Councilman Hampton. I also attended the uh, employee spring picnic, as I think that's what we called it. And uh, that was good to be able to uh, see some more of the employees and be able to recognize them and let them uh, yeah, get out and enjoy and be able to just recognize them for all their hard work throughout the year as well. So I thought it was good. There was so good. There were two ice cream trucks there. So, and uh, I think we kept teasing the kids at the playground across the way with all that free ice cream we were eating, but, but it was, uh, but yeah, it was a great event and I'm glad that we do things like that for our employees. So, and then, yeah, the Harley Davidson was great as well. I thought it was, um, I just feel cooler already. With, with Harley Davidson being in Goodyear, so um, I thought it's a great, great addition to to our city, and I think it'll just, I mean, bring more and more, uh, more and more things to to Goodyear as well. So thank you. Any other one? 
Yes, Sherry. I, I was pretty much with everybody else, and I just want to comment on the urban air. The other thing about that is they have stuff for kids of all ages and adults. So yeah. maybe we'll do a, a council team building. I'll do an extra treat there. You know, if you want that extra supplemental, you gotta beat them, beat them at the warrior course or something. <laughs> and I do want to thank also my AMWA meeting, and I want to thank Representative Osborne for her leadership. She was one of the voices that helped shepherd the drought contingency plan through. And that is, I believe, now at the U.S. House. Um, so I just want to say she's sitting in the office. I uh, she's sitting down there today. I want to thank her because she used to sit on AMWA, and she knows how important water is to to Arizona. What did what did she say? Waters, uh, whiskeys for drinking, waters for fighting is what she used to say, and it's so true. So thank you for your leadership. Any other ones? I would like to mention, I went to the artist reception, uh, artist choice fine art show at the library. It was packed. So it's a good thing that we're gonna build another library, which is gonna be larger uh, and we'll have rooms because um, the display was wonderful and it was, a, it was a social hour for so many people. I mean, there wasn't a seat in the house left. So great job. All right, now is the time. Uh, City Manager, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mayor and Council. This past weekend, the Goodyear Police Department's K-9 unit participated in the 17th annual Desert Dogs Police K-9 Trials held in Scottsdale. 55 teams from multiple states competed in front of about 5,000 spectators over the two-day span. We are proud to announce that the Goodyear team did exceptionally well in the competition. They won first place for top patrol agency. And I also wanted to recognize that we had three officers in their canines place in various competitions. So Officer Armstead and canine Azer received first place for top dog, second place in the building search competition, and fifth place in the narcotics search. Officer Josh White and canine Rudy took first place in area search competition, second place for top dog, third place in building search competition, and fifth place for obedience officer. And then Officer Jared Jordan and K-9 Basco received wow. fifth place in the building search competition. So big congratulations to our team. Oh Way to God. represent. Well, that's, that's wonderful news. Congratulations. Hard work by everybody. And uh, just a super, super announcement. Well, thank you. The next meeting will be a work session on April 15th at 4.30. And then April 22nd will be a work session at 4.30 and a regular meeting at 6. No further business to discuss. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>